Good afternoon, and it is always a great deal of excitement realizing that you could make it to be part of the show, your Tuesday tonic, the political update. Fifteen by elections conducted on Saturday, 5th of December 2020. Yes, by elections, but not bygone issues. For instance, in the Imo North Senatorial District, it is no longer an inter party contest, but an intra party wrangling. Two APC candidates fighting for the soul of the certificate of return. Be that as it may, it was three thread draw for APC and PDP for the sixth senatorial district elections. Congratulations. Was well contested. The word many may not want to hear resurfaced in Kakura State constituency of Zamfara State. It is an inconclusive election. So, more lobbying for the candidates, more resources needed by INEC. While in Ghana, candidates for the presidential election are in a prayer mode because the election was conducted on Monday, December 7th, and the counting of ballots ongoing. These and more form the content of today's program for your digest. I am Mie Ogede. Let's begin by giving you statistics of the results that we announced by INEC on the Saturday after the elections. We begin from Bielsa State. The Bielsa Central results show that Moses Klopas of PDP is the winner, while Abel Bifamuwe of the APC came second. In Bielsa West, Syriac Dixon is the winner of PDP, while Paramobowe, a baby of the APC, came second. In Imo North, in Imo North, APC is the winner, but there is no candidate yet. While PDP, Emmanuel, came second. While in Cross River State, Stephen Ode, it was a contest between two Odes. Stephen Ode of the PDP is the winner, while Joe Ode of the APC came second. In Lagos East, in Lagos East, Tokumbo Abiru of the APC is the winner, while Babatunde of the PDP came second. Okay, then finally Plateau South, Professor Nura Ladi of the APC is the winner, while George Daika of the PDP became second. So that is the result of the six senatorial by elections that were conducted. Of course, nine state constituency elections were also conducted, but those were for the state's consumption. With me in the studio to give further analysis on the results, we have the INEC National Commissioner in charge of uh, information and voter education, Festus Okoye. Festus, you are welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Also with us in the studio is the APC Chairman of Imo State, Daniel Inwofo. You are welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. So let's begin with INEC. We, from the results, no candidate for APC, but AP won the elections. So can you explain to Nigerians the current situation of things in the Imo North Senatorial District? Well, I, I think that uh, the current situation is that as of today, uh, we have the APC as the uh, party that has been declared as the winner of the election uh, without any candidate being returned as duly elected. Now, le le let, me, let me explain the background to uh, some of these challenges we have uh, because I think that uh, some people are confused relating to uh, what is going on in Imo State. Now, before the election, one of the uh, aspirants in the APC uh, was, his, his name was forwarded to the Independent National Electoral Commission as the candidate of the political party that will contest the senatorial by election. Then the commission published the name of that particular uh, uh, candidate uh, as the person who will contest the election. Um, a few days after, 
one of the aspirants, to, so to say, in the same party, uh, went to the went to court uh, to contend that he was the actual winner of the uh, party primaries, and that he ought to be uh, the candidate whose name should be um, uh, submitted to the Independent National Electoral Commission, and the Federal High Court uh, agreed with him and order the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, to replace his, uh, to remove the name of um, uh, 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 the previous candidate and replace with that of Senator uh, Ifanya Rumen, uh, which the commission did. Now, on, on Friday, just a day before the election, the Court of Appeal, uh, sitting in Oware, uh, delivered the judgment and contended in the judgment that one, that the court that gave the judgment, that is the Federal High Court, did not have jurisdiction uh, to give the judgment on grounds that uh, the issues uh, at stake were within the domestic realm of the political party and made a declaration that his name should be removed from uh, uh, the list of candidates contesting the election. The same, the same Friday, 4th of, uh, of uh, December, Another federal high court in the federal capital territory uh, delivered a judgment uh, to the effect that the candidate whose name was now replaced on the ballot was not qualified to be nominated as a candidate of the political party. And based on that, we were asked to re remove the name of the candidate as the candidate of the political party. And this was on Saturday, uh, I mean on Friday, a day before the election, on the eve of the election. And on the eve of the election, almost all the national commissioners were out of Abuja. Dr. Ogumola, who is a na one of the national commissioners, was supervising uh, the elections in the Lagos uh, East Senatorial District. Uh, Mala Mohamed Haruna was in Plateau, uh, supervising the elections. I was in Cross River State, uh, supervising, uh, uh, supervising the elections. The acting chairman, was on ground uh, here while uh, National Commissioner K. Banu uh, is technically uh, is technically on, on, on leave, and then Mayor Bamuchembo was in Bayelsa supervising the election. So, as at the time these things were happening, there was no National Commissioner on ground except the acting chair chairman. Now, we must realize that at the pooling unit, because people are really confused, I have I came with what we call form EC8A1, uh, which is the form we normally use at the pooling unit for senatorial election. If you, look, if, you, if, you look at the, if you look at the form, you can see that in the form, you don't see the name of any candidate. What you see, you see are the acronym of the political parties. Mm. So, so when the candidates, when the voters go to the pooling unit on election day, what they vote for is the political party. Yes. They vote for the party. Mm. And the, it, it is recorded uh, in, in West and in figures. And then the uh, pooling agents uh, we, 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 we sign. Now, after this, the presiding officer carries this particular form together with the ballot papers and other electoral documents to the registration area collation center. We are a collation officer. We collect the results. And the collection officer will collect the results into what we call from EC8B1. And this is, for, this is from EC8B1. You will not see the name of any candidate in from EC8B1. Okay. You only see the name, the acronym of the political party. Now, after that, the, it now goes to the local government area level, where the votes are of the, of the scores of the parties are also collected. You will not see the name of any okay. candidate here. Okay, so now what 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 is INEC waiting? Will you want to get judgment from the Supreme Court? Now, now ju just wait. Now, you also have from EC8D, which is the summary of results from all the local governments mm. making up the senatorial district. You don't see the name of any candidate here. It is when you get to the declaration of result that you now see the names of candidates. That is when the names of the candidates are unveiled. Now, so what we have done mm. is that, one, a declaration has been made that 
the APC scored so and so number of votes and won the election. And won the election. Okay. But we are unable, the uh, returning officer is unable to return a candidate because of the pending uh, issues in court. So the commission we meet deliberate on the on the on the issues if there's the need for us to make a return right. we will make a return okay. if uh, on the other hand if a court of law mm. may likely intervene and then give direction on what to do okay thank yes. you so you are the chairman of apc uh emo states how do you react to this um development okay thank you very much um um i would differ a little with what um the national commissioner has said on the Friday, which was on the 4th of um, December, there was a court judgment, a federal court judgment in Abuja, which stopped Mr. Frank Ibezim, which ordered Frank Ibezim not to contest elections in Nigeria again, because the court found that his documents were fake and we are not, um, he wasn't supposed to present them. He, the, in the pronouncement, the court says, do not contest elections in Nigeria again. That happened in Abuja. Okay. And immediately the judgment came, the judgment was served on INEC. Now, in a way, like he rightly said, after the primaries, which um, Frankie Basin was erroneously put as the candidate of the party, a woman, Lady Uche Noba, went to Federal High Court with Sretara Rume, APC, INEC, and other people as defendants. The court found out from that um, court suit that Frankie Bezin wasn't supposed to be the candidate. The court now declared that, uh, gave a consequential order, that Sretara Rume should immediately be put. Now, INEC put Sretara Rume, and Sretara Rume remained the candidate up until 5th until the Friday, the yes, fourth. Yes, yes. Now, when the Court of Appeal gave a judgment, the Court of Appeal ruled that the judge, the court suit which Secretary Rame was standing on wasn't supposed to be in the first place. Now, we found, um, we quarreled with the judgment. Immediately after the Court of Appeal uh, judgment, we filed a stay of execution. And we filed a notice of appeal. And that same Friday, I am aware that INEC legal department was served. Okay. On Friday, I am aware they were served. Immediately, you file a stay of execution of a judgment and you file a notice of, of, of appeal. Like he rightly said, these people, he said his national commissioners were not around. Yes. The legal department of INEC is aware and we have um, the, the um, received copies of the service. INEC is aware that we serve them. So you so the party in this Now, if these people were not around on Friday, mm. who changed Ararume's name? That's the question. Okay. Who changed his name? So the From Friday, six, even the judgment of Court of Appeal, we received it 6 p.m. on Friday. So uh, are you the party? Where Who is your candidate at the state level? Senator Ararume remains the candidate of the party. So are you people like, like, taking this matter to the Supreme Court? Or you want to well, still we expect have INEC, settle with INEC? We expect INEC to do the right thing. So In the first place, we now, from what he has said now, we will now begin to query who removed his name. Okay. Because he has said that they were not around. Okay. So how was his name changed from 6 p.m. to um, 6 a.m. the next morning? So for who now, changed his name? So for now, no legal uh, issue has been taken. We are from? considering all options. Okay. Like, But we expect INEC... What are some of the options? No, no, no. The first option is that INEC should do the right thing. INEC should declare Senator Rume. The winner. He's the winner. He won the election. Okay. His name was there up to 6 p.m. He's a candidate of the party. So INEC should declare him, and then every other matter, people should go to tribunal. But, but do you think uh, it's a matter you cannot settle within the party and come up with a common ground and present to INEC? You see, you see the problem... And, and resolve it internally? The problem we have in Nigeria, we're beginning to have, is that we're beginning to over overlook court judgments and court pronouncements. Okay. It has been a problem. I've, I've been suffering that problem, even he knows with INEC, but that's a, a matter of a okay. separate day. Okay. What we expect INEC to do is to obey all court pronouncements. Okay, okay. let's briefly hear from Festus. Yes. Festus, he, he made a very valid point here. Mm. The national commissioners were not around, uh, uh, but that doesn't mean that the whole institution was uh, closed. Yes. So, 
the legal department was there, and we know they, they, have, they have director, director legal yes. services. So, yes. uh, what, what, what was the reaction? Um, we had a Zoom meeting uh, when we got uh, these judgments. Okay. And we directed appropriately on what should happen. Now, let, let me, uh, you see, I've been a lawyer for over 35 years. And he will uh, acknowledge that, and I'm sure he has the judgment of the Court of Appeal. When a court says that a particular, a lower court does not have jurisdiction to entertain a particular matter, the implication is that everything that was done by the lower court is null and void, and that what the lower court did, did does not exist either in fact or in law. So the implication is that ab initio, there w a, a Senator Ararume's name was never submitted to the commission, and that the commission never put up his name on the list of the candidates. That's the implication of saying that the court that uh, entertained the matter did not have jurisdiction to entertain the matter. Okay. So, so that, that is it. Now, secondly, the fact that you have filed a notice of appeal and the fact that you have filed a motion for stay of execution does not uh, 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 permit you uh, to still be uh, uh, the candidate of the party. This commission, the Independent National Electoral Commission acts only on the basis of court orders and judgments. We don't act on the basis of anticipatory uh, uh, orders and anticipatory judgments. There, is, there was no stay of execution of the judgment of the lower court, of the Court of Appeal, and there, there, there has not been any determination. So on the basis of that, we will not, you can file a, I'm a lawyer, you can file a notice of uh, a stay of execution and withdraw it the, same, the following day. So, but if there's a valid court order, we will definitely obey. In relation to this, there was no valid court order from any other court. The only order we have is the order from the Court of Appeal uh, saying that the lower court, the, that's the Federal High Court in Owere, did not have jurisdiction uh, to uh, entertain the matter. And consequently, the, the, the Court of Appeal set aside the judgment of the lower court. And that was exactly what, what happened. And I have the, I have the judgment. Okay. And it was served on us. Okay. And then the, the okay. Federal High Court here also, uh, in Abuja, uh, set aside... Uh, ju just hold yes, on. Eh? The Federal High Court here also made a declaration, no, okay. made okay. a ruling, no, okay. and gave an order okay. that Frankie Bezim was disqualified from being okay. nominated as okay. the candidate of the party. Okay. That left us with the party on the ballot with no candidate. Okay. And that's exactly the position well, of the law. First of all, we still yes. come back to you and... Uh, 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 the chairman uh, APC Imo State. But uh, there was also a sad development in Biasa State. A, 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 some police officers lost their lives. And we have the Commissioner of Police, Biasa State, so yeah, the latest development. Uh, Commissioner um, uh, Mike Okoli, uh, Commissioner of Police, Biasa State, if you can hear me loud and clear. I'm with you, I'm with you. Okay, let's briefly hear from you. Uh, there is this report that you lost some of your men on that Saturday uh, election. Can we please hear from you and uh, as of this moment, the development, whether the corpses have been uh, recovered or all that? It was really a very sad moment, an election that was progressing peacefully. All of a sudden, we heard of that uh, capsize. Uh, it was so devastating. But uh, the following day, all the bodies were recovered by our maritime department. How many of them, sir? Uh, six bodies. Six okay. bodies were recovered okay. uh, by our maritime department and the uh, local divers. And they all been taken to a mug, a pump. A very sad, sad, very sad situation. Yeah, really? Okay, so uh, are you carrying out any form of investigation? or? Uh, definitely the driver of that boat is our custody. He has to explain why he allowed the policemen to board that boat without putting on their life jackets. It was carelessness on his side. A, a, a boat driver must ensure the safety of his passengers by ensuring that they're equipped with life jackets. But he never gave any of them life jackets. So he's helping us to find out what happened. As I speak now, he is in our custody. Commissioner Police, we really sympathize with you on that. And, uh, thank you very much. Thank I you. appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so first off, let's take you to Zamfara State, uh, Bakura State Constituency, yes. where you even some of your men were were missing. Yes. And yesterday we had a report that one of them 
uh, has been found. So what really happened, can you briefly share with us what happened and uh, tomorrow you are doing a supplementary election. So what is the development? Well, I, I think that uh, some of the political parties uh, contesting the election got desperate and wanted to have uh, an outcome uh, by hook or by, by, by any means. Um, some of our staff we have Do talked to, uh, some of them we are, we are beating up. Election materials we are torn, election materials we are snatched, and this, as far as the commission is concerned, is completely un unacceptable. Uh, so, uh, based on the provisions of Section 53 of the, of the Electoral Act, uh, where there is any form of overvoting, uh, the law permits us, um, uh, the, the law permits us uh, not to declare the results from those particular areas, but to cancel them uh, because they are null and void. And if the result uh, of the cancelled areas w has the tendency or capacity of affecting the overall outcome, the law permits us uh, to pause until um, the elections have taken place in those areas uh, before we can make a declaration and a return. And so we have quickly remobilized and we have told the political parties that <coughs> we are going to conclude this particular election uh, tomorrow being Wednesday. And le let me make it very, very clear that according to our rules, according to our procedures and our processes, if any political party or any community obstructs the delivery of election materials, we will take it that elections has taken place in those areas and we will give zero vote to the entire area and then proceed. If they resist the use of the smart card reader, we will take it that the particular polling unit or the entire polling units have voted and we give zero votes and then we proceed. And so I think that the political party should be very, very careful because uh, if they attempt to do what they did uh, during the December 5th uh, 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 by-elections, uh, uh, we will just um, give zero votes to the entire 14 polling units and then we proceed to go and announce uh, the result of that particular election. Okay. Um, uh, Daniel, let's come back to you. Most of the litigations we are having post or pre-election cases are mostly as a result of a political party, you know, internal issues. As a state chairman of APC in Imo State, going forward, what will you advise to contribute for the development of democracy in Nigeria? I will always advise the national leadership of any political party to do the right thing. I've always advised that we we make the rules. We should follow our rules. The rules are there. Constitutions are there. The bylaws are there. We should follow them. We, impl we should implement them to the latter. We shouldn't be changing uh, the goalposts in the in the middle of matches. Uh, Imo is a very um, um, well. This is not. Um, we don't have much time to talk about Imo. Maybe I'll come back talk about Imo. Yes, we invite The you national talk. leadership should live up to his uh, expectations. Okay. Uh, the people we we hope they do the right thing always. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, first of all, yes. let's say we, are, we have spent almost two four, seven minutes. Yes. Because you, you, came, you came with so many documents. Yes. <laughs> okay, but, but, but let's hear from you. If, for instance, today the APC as a party settle this matter within themselves and present a position and withdraw those cases in the court, will that going to satisfy the needs of INEC to issue that certificate of freedom? No, no, no. There are already judgments. And uh, you cannot go back on this particular, on these judgments. Um, uh, it's only a superior court uh, that can set aside what has happened. Uh, so if, for instance, uh, these matters um, uh, uh, um, um, are withdrawn from, from the Supreme Court now in relation to the one Arari may file, the implication is that the subsisting judgment is the judgment of the Court of Appeal. And then if, for instance, uh, uh, Frank Ibezim uh, withdraws the matter he has filed in the, in, the, in the Court of Appeal relating to the judgment of the Federal High Court. The implication is that it is the Federal High Court judgment that subsists. And the, the, the overall and cumulative implication of that is that the APC will not have any candidate in the Imo, in the Imo uh, senatorial election. Uh, so, so I think that that should be made very, very clear. But on the other hand, relating to what he has said, I think that one of the things we need to do is to get the internal party dynamics of the political parties right. Let political parties conduct clean party primaries. And not only conducting clean party primaries, we must also find ways and means of making sure that all pre-election matters are determined at least two weeks before election. Uh, because what was going on is that the two candidates we are campaigning 
at the simultaneously based on the provisions of section 141 of the electoral act that says that before a candidate can be declared as a winner that candidate must participate in all the processes and procedures of the election thank you first yes. we don't have time we know you are a lawyer so <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was really an engaging moment uh, discussing with you first of okay thanks for coming and also all the way from Imo state where we thank you, the APC chairman, Imo State, thank uh, you very much. Daniel Imo. For thanks. We pray that uh, you get your certification for return. We hope that <laughs> I make the class <laughs> 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 very soon. <laughs> okay, my colleague in uh, um, Accra, Ghana, is still keeping an eye on the presidential elections there, and the uh, results are yet to be announced. We will update you in subsequent uh, programs on NTA. That is the much we can take on today's edition on political update. Do stay with us because we promise to give you another fresh package on Friday. Thanks for joining us.